Hi, this is Shannon from No Shelf Control. Thanks for joining me on my channel tonight. I am introducing a new feature that I am calling Shelf Shopping with Shannon. Cute, right? So um, I went into my bedroom and looked at the bookshelf. It has six shelves on it. And so I decided to cover my eyes and blindly pick six books. I have so many books around the house um, and so many of them that I haven't had a chance to talk about that I thought I would just go and randomly pick six books um, and bring them here to talk about with you. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. Um, let's get started. The first one that I wanna talk about is The Many Daughters of Afong Moy by Jamie Ford. Now, Jamie Ford is the author of The Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. I haven't read that one, but I've heard many good things about it, and it leaves me very intrigued by picking up this one. This one is um, published in 2022. It's 362 pages. Um, and I'm going to read you a little bit about it. You will notice that of the books that I randomly picked just blindly tonight, five of them were published in 2022 and one was published in 2017. So I'm not sure what that says. A little bit backlist, but, but pretty much new books. Let's read uh, what it says about the many daughters of Afang Moy. Dear reader, in this masterful new novel from New York Times bestseller Jamie Ford, there is a scene that just won't leave me. A mother in Seattle, Dorothy Moy, wakes in the middle of the night in their apartment at the top of a towering building as a ferocious storm moves over the city, worried about her young daughter. She wanders from room to room but can't find her until a large flash of lightning illuminates Annabelle in her footy pajamas staring out of their huge living room window her small hands against the glass. The instant concern I had for Annabelle leaning against that window with the winds barreling down and the instant relief I felt the moment Dorothy finds her represents just one profound and moving moment in a sea of profound and moving moments that echo throughout the many daughters of Afang Moy. So my understanding is that this is a book about that's generational. Um, and it is about the first Chinese woman ever to move to the United States. That's my understanding. We will see. Um, but I am really intrigued to see how this goes down. Um, the premise reminds me a little bit of home going um, and how the generational, you sort of follow what happens um, to an immigrant family um, as time goes on. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this one. And uh, I hope that you might check it out as well. The next book I want to talk about is, let me get it here, When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff. And this book I got from Book of the Month. It was also published in 2022. It is about 300 pages. And here's what it says about this one. You can have everything and still not have enough. Cassie Quinn may only be 23, but she knows a few things. One, money can't buy happiness, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Two, family comes first. Three, her younger brother Billy is not a rapist. When Billy, a junior at Princeton, is arrested for assaulting his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Cassie races home to Manhattan to join forces with her parents and older brother. While certain of his innocence, the Quins know that Billy fits the all too familiar sex offender profile, white, athletic, and privileged, that makes headlines and sways juries. So as the clock ticks and the law closes in, the family scrambles to hire the best defense money can buy. Ooh, that sounds really good. So this is a Me Too movement kind of um, topical book uh, by Jillian Medoff really interested in getting into this one. This was one of the books of the month from August of 2022. You can always tell when I have one of my book of the month uh, books because they're stamped in the corner that way. All right. Now I really want to get into that one too. That's the problem. So the next book I want to talk about is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. You probably know St. John Mandel from Station Eleven. You may have also read The Glass Hotel. Um, I also saw the show, I think it was HBO, maybe Netflix, um, that did Station Eleven as a series. It was really good. It wasn't necessarily true to Station Eleven, the book, 
um, but it was also really good. My son and I really enjoyed it. Um, and he also read Station Eleven. So um, I think uh, Emily St. John Mandel, at least from what I know of her writing, is also appropriate for YA reading. Let me tell you a little bit about this one. So also published in 2022, as I said, all but one of these books, actually the last one, were published in 2022. This one is about 255 pages. And here's what it says. The award-winning best-selling author of Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel, that's what I said, returns with a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries and space. Edwin St. Andrew is 18 years old when he crosses the Atlantic by steamship, exiled from polite English society following an ill-conceived diatribe at a dinner party. He enters the forest, spellbound by the beauty of the Canadian wilderness, and suddenly hears the notes of a violin echoing in an airship terminal an experience that shocks him to the core. Two centuries later, a famous writer named Olive Llewellyn is on a book tour. She's traveling all over Earth, but her home is the second moon colony, a place of white stone, spired towers, and artificial beauty. Within the text of Olive's best-selling pandemic novel lies a strange passage. A man plays his violin for spare change in the echoing corridor of an airship terminal as the trees of a forest rise around him. Gaspery Roberts, a hotel detective in the black skied night city, is hired to investigate an anomaly in the North American wilderness. He uncovers a series of lives upended, the exiled son of an earl driven to madness, a writer trapped far from home as a pandemic ravages earth, and a childhood friend from the night city who, like Gaspery himself, has glimpsed the chance to do something extraordinary that will disrupt the timeline of the universe. A virtuoso performance that is as human and tender as it is intellectually playful, Sea of Tranquility is a novel of time travel and metaphysics that precisely captures the reality of our current moment. Now, a, sea of or a novel about time travel and metaphysics is not exactly what I would have told you that I wanted to read, but I trust Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I, Station Eleven was a little out there, um, but I really enjoyed it, and so I'm absolutely willing to give this one a try, and I hope you will too. Okay, next book. This next one is called Memphis by Tara Stringfellow. I love this cover. Um, this one I received from Roxanne Gay's book club. Um, it's called Audacious. You'll see the little sticker right there, Audacious from Roxanne Gay's book club. This is by Tara Stringfellow. It is about 250 pages. Again, published in 2022. That's the theme this evening. And let me tell you a little bit about it. The Things Women Do for the Sake of Their Daughters. Summer 1995, 10-year-old Joan, her mother, and her younger sister flee her father's explosive temper and seek refuge at her mother's ancestral home in Memphis. This is not the first time violence has altered the course of the family's trajectory. Half a century earlier, Joan's grandfather built this majestic house in the historic black neighborhood of Douglas, only to be lynched days after becoming the first black homicide detective in the city. Joan tries to settle into her new life, but family secrets cast a longer shadow than any of them expected. As she grows up, Joan finds relief in her artwork, painting portraits of the community in Memphis. One of her subjects is her enigmatic neighbor, Miss Dawn, who claims to know something about curses and whose stories about the past help Joan see how her passion imagination and relentless hope are, in fact, the continuation of a long matrilineal tradition. Joan begins to understand that her mother, her mother's mother, and the mothers before them persevered, made impossible choices, and put their dreams on hold so that her life would not have to be defined by loss and anger, that the sole instrument she needs for healing is her paintbrush. Very interesting, love a good matrilineal saga. And you can see some of the characters here on the cover. Very interested in that. Uh, it is actually blurbed by Jacqueline Woodson, 
who says, written with the grace of a poet, Memphis is as hopeful as it is heartbreaking. I fell in love with this family from Joan's fierce heart to her grandmother Hazel's determined resilience. Tara M. Stringfellow will be an author to watch for years to come. A stellar debut. All right. Man, I have some good books on my shelves. Why have I not read any of these? Okay, the next one is called In the Shadow of the Mountain. And the subtitle is A Memoir of Courage. And it is by Sylvia Vasquez Lovato. And this one is about 300 pages. I like the cover. I like the knot. I wonder what it's going to signify. Uh, it's about 300 pages, again, published in 2022. The stack of books that I set aside is trying to fall over. Um, this one is blurbed by Elizabeth Gilbert, and it says, In climbing the seven summits, Sylvia Vasquez Lovato did nothing less than take back her own life, one brave step at a time. She will inspire untold numbers of souls with this story, for her victory is a win on behalf of all of us. All right, so let me read you uh, the synopsis. When Sylvia's mother called her home to Peru, she knew something finally had to give. A Latinx hero in the elite macho tech world of Silicon Valley, privately she was hanging by a thread. She was deep in the throes of alcoholism, hiding her sexuality from her family and repressing the abuse she'd suffered as a child. Her visit to Peru would become a turning point in her life. There, Sylvia started climbing. Something about the brute force required for the ascent, the restricted oxygen at altitude, the vast expanse of emptiness around her, the risk and spirit and sheer size of the mountains, the nearness of death, woke her up from a destructive cycle of self-medicating behavior. And then she took her biggest pain to the biggest mountain, Everest. The mother of the world, as it's known in Nepal, allows few to reach her summit, but Sylvia didn't go alone. She gathered a group of young female survivors of sexual abuse and led them to base camp alongside her, their strength and community propelling her forward. So I guess we can see why Elizabeth Gilbert blurbed this one. It's a book about climbing. Wow, and I guess it's a uh, true story. This one is actually also blurbed by Eve Ensler, who says, Sylvia Vasquez Lovato's story gripped my heart. What a beautiful and urgent offering. And it is also blurbed by Selena Gomez. Sylvia Vasquez Lovato is a warrior. This book is a testament to the power of extraordinary vulnerability, empathy, and selflessness, and a reaffirmation of the healing that comes from building a community. I'm in awe of her strength and courage, which she has captured so beautifully in this memoir. So a lot of uh, big hype. How did I miss this one? It's been on my shelves all this time. Okay. And the last one I have for you, this one I actually got um, at an author signing. So I went and heard her talk about her newest book. This is Fiona Davis, and the book is The Dollhouse. And this one is about, this is a small book, but it's about 330 pages. I don't know if you can tell, but it's about three quarters the size of a regular book. So I'm sure this is a fast read. Everything else that I've ever read by Fiona Davis was a quick read, very educational. She always picks a location or a point in time in history and then builds a story around it, usually in New York City. Um, and this one, I believe, well, we'll see when we read the synopsis, but um, I think I know what this book is about. I think I heard her talk about it. So this one, um, the Associated Press says, the dollhouse is a thrilling peek through a window into another world, one that readers will savor for a long time. So here's the synopsis. Fiona Davis's stunning debut novel pulls readers into the lush world of New York City's glamorous Barbizon Hotel for Women, where in the 1950s, a generation of aspiring models, secretaries, and editors lived side by side while attempting to claw their way to fairy tale success, and where a present day journalist becomes consumed with uncovering a dark secret buried deep within the Barbizon's glitzy past. When she arrives at the famed Barbizon Hotel in 1952, secretarial school enrollment in hand, Darby McLaughlin is everything her modeling agency hallmates aren't. Plain, self-conscious, homesick, 
and utterly convinced she doesn't belong. Yet when Darby, be yet when Darby befriends Esme, a Barbizon maid, she's introduced to an entirely new side of New York City, seedy jazz clubs where the music is as addictive as the heroin that's used there, the startling sounds of bebop, and even the possibility of romance. More than a half a century later, the Barbizon's gone condo, and most of its long-ago guests are forgotten. But rumors of Darby's involvement in a deadly skirmish with a hotel maid back in 1952 haunt the halls of the building as surely as the melancholy music that floats from the elderly woman's rent-controlled apartment. It's a combination too intoxicating for journalist Rose Lewin, Darby's upstairs neighbor, to resist not to mention the perfect distraction from her own imploding personal life. Yet as Rose's obsession deepens, the ethics of her investigation become increasingly murky, and neither woman will remain unchanged when the shocking truth is finally revealed. So that's The Dollhouse by Fiona Davis. People Magazine said, rich both in twists and period detail, this tale of big city ambition is impossible to put down. So I think that one would be a fun, quick read that would also sort of immerse you in uh, the 1950s New York City, which I love. So those are the six books on uh, Shelf Shopping with Shannon tonight. Um, you got to see some of the books that are hanging out on my shelves waiting to be read. I hope that you will love one of them and decide to grab it. Um, please smash the subscribe button for me so that I can continue to make these videos and come back and talk to you about all of the books that come across my path, the things that I read and love, the things that I read and don't love. Um, and we can continue to have conversation about books. So thanks for joining me tonight. I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye.